Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a great, brilliant, amazing day. I'm actually doing quite good today. Today I'm going to be doing my August and September reading wrap up. I read 12 graphic novels slash comics and two real books. I'm going to start off with the graphic novels and comics, so feel free to go to this timestamp if that's not your thing and I can talk about the two books that I actually, that I actually read for... I read one book in August and one book in September and they're both quite short but I've been in a reading slump and visual books have really been a big aid for me to get back into reading and I just have been having so much fun with it and exploring and trying to go out of my comfort zone with that type of like that type of books. The first book that I read was The Lab. This is actually a graphic novel without any words. Can you imagine? I've never read one of those before. I thought it was really interesting. It does have a really really sad plot but it does go well towards the end. Because there's only pictures though, the story feels very short and small. And it does leave a lot of questions open. It is about this little figure that is basically in a sort of factory or science lab. And the little guy, dude, gal, object, person, alien is taken out every so often and they're injected with something, they're done experiments on, uh, they basically are miserable and there are thousands of these little guys um, that are also been done the same things too. So it's very real and hard to read in a way, but then the ending leaves questions. I liked it, I gave it four stars. I definitely felt like there was text to be desired, but I also liked that it was different in that way. Cool, let's move on. Let's get, get going with these. Jesus, why is it so crowded here? The next book I picked up is Girl Town by Carolyn Nowak. Nowak? Novak. This is basically a short story collection. I believe that Carolyn's other works have been published elsewhere, and this is sort of a collection of those. It is, I want to say like sci-fi, magical realism, speculative, so it's very based on like normal life and normal relationships, but then there's like a small element of something that is a bit abnormal or something that isn't in our daily life. The first story, I don't really like. The art is a bit different depending on which story. So the first story is only one color or one shade, and then some of them are full shades. My favorite is definitely one, the one I think called Electric Tongue. It's about this woman who is quite lonely. I think she's just broken up with her boyfriend and she gets like a robot boyfriend, like a fake boyfriend that comes in a box. That is basically her boyfriend. It is good and when she kisses the guy, like they can have sex and everything. Like there's just, he's like a boyfriend and he tells her how he feels and all that. It's so weird but also lovely. I don't know how many stars did I give this? I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I got confused in the beginning because I didn't know it was short stories and that's like, how do these connect? But it's also about women. All of the characters are women, I believe, more or less. So I enjoyed it. The art style is really cool. I love how some of them are structured, like the... I really love these illustration pages. Then the next four graphic novels I'm going to gloss over because I did a reading vlog that you can check out in the cards and I'll also leave it in the description where I basically just try to read as many graphic novels as possible in a day and I talk quite in depth about them there so I will just go over them quickly in this wrap up. The first one was Avatar The Lost Adventures. This is a collection of short stories that take place in the Avatar The Last Airbender series so these all take place during that story and there's no they're basically short stories that are added to the story they're funny they're very short they're created by different writers and artists so the art is a bit different depending on um the artist i really enjoyed this i thought it was a fun quirky addition it doesn't really bring all that much to the story but i enjoyed it and i'm excited to get to the actual comics that happen after the TV show, like The Promise and stuff. I gave it three stars. Then we have The Phantom Twin by Lisa Brown. This is about these uh, twins that are basically Siamese twins. They're connected by the shoulder and the leg, or they share an arm and a leg. And one of the twins are kind of dormant and they work at this freak show because that's the only place they belong. They were cast out by their parents when they were very young. So. They find this doctor who basically says that they can 
that he can separate them, but something goes wrong during the procedure and basically the dominant twin, our main character's sister, dies during the process and our main character is left with a metal arm and metal leg and they have to kind of find their place in the world. This book talks a lot about ableism and the controversy of freak show, how there's go both good and bad within this concept. I liked it, I gave it three stars. It didn't overwhelm me and I felt like the text at the end of the novel brought more to the story than the actual story itself and I wish there was more discussion within the story and that the text wasn't necessary, if you know what I mean. After that, I picked up Catherine's War by Julia Billet and Claire Fauvel. This is a true story based on the writer's mother. So it was originally written as a book and this is just a graphic novel adaption. I haven't written read I haven't written the book obviously I haven't read the book but I thought this was really really good I gave it five stars because it emotionally just touched me so much I cried at the end and the story was great it's about I always tell my feelings before I actually talk about the book I don't know why I do that so this is basically about this girl uh, Rachel she's Jewish she goes to an amazing school but then the second world war happens and she has to flee her school to go to a Catholic school she has to change her name to Catherine and her only tool her only one true power is the camera photography and she's given a mission by her old teachers to basically document what happens to her during the war. This was very impactful and the writing was just beautiful. I wasn't a big fan of the art, but I did it really like warm up to it throughout it. I highly recommend it's positive throughout the whole experience. So a great graphic novel. Then we have Steven Universe to Cool for School. This is part of the originals graphic novel editions of Steven Universe. So these are all written by different illustrators and writers, I believe. Basically, Steven goes to school with Connie. If you've seen the show, basically Steven, he learns and lives with the crystal gems and he doesn't really go to school. He only learns what's necessary for his survival. Like his dad is so awesome. Like why does he let him do this? So Steven goes to school for the first time and he realizes that the things that he goes through, the things that he thinks are normal, are not normal. So Connie has to teach him how to be normal in a way. Things happen, gem things interfere, hell sets loose. I liked this. I do believe I gave it three or four stars. It wasn't... Mm, did I? What? I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it, but it was very simple, the story, and it didn't... I didn't learn anything new. All that much about Steven Universe's world. Then I read a great great book that I recommend for everyone. I love the series. I've read all of them now. I really want a copy of one of them that is A Quick and Easy Guide to They Them Pronouns, which is the one that actually applies to me. This is A Quick and Easy Guide to Sex and Disability by A. Andrews. This is super short and A. Andrews themselves is disabled and basically they talk about all these different ways that sex can be easier for um, within disabled people, like able-bodied people who have sex with disabled people. It is a lot about um, how to make it comfortable, like the acceptance, the uh, vulnerability that's involved, like oh, things to say and not to say. And I just think in general, this is a great guide for everyone who has sex to have, like the things that Andrew talks about, Andrews, the last name Andrews talks about throughout this book really does apply to able-bodied people to having sex and how just to make like sex more enjoyable for everyone and how it can be a discussion um, how important it is to have those discussions so I really enjoyed this it has really made me open my mind up to wanting to read more uh, from disabled um, authors and books about uh, disabled characters because I feel like that's really been lacking in my reading until now. I'm interested just reading from that perspective more. Five stars, I highly recommend. After that I picked up like a mil middle grade graphic novel. This is Princess, <laughs> Princess, Princess Ever After. This was so cute. Okay, so <laughs> I love this. Did I give five stars? I'm very excited about this clearly. I gave you four stars. It's a bit of a simple story, but I do highly recommend it. So it's about this character, her, which has like a sort of a Rapunzel arc. She lives in this tower and every prince who's ever tried to save her has basically failed because she's been sabotaging them. Then this other princess uh, comes and tries to save her and she lets her and 
I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I see you, I know, I think you know where this is going. So cute. This was just a needed children's story. Uh, I really loved it. <laughs> and then they go to like save this prince. And the prince is like, no, I won't be saved by any girls, but it just, he's in so much trouble. Anyways, let's move on. Oh, this was by Katie O'Neill, by the way. I was trying to look for more books by her, but I've only, I only found this one in uh, the graphic novel store. I know, I was actually looking for the aquatic something and the tea dragon. Mm, there's tea dragon society and tea dragon like tea party, tea party, I don't know. I read one of them. So I was actually going to look for those, but I found this one instead. I am really glad I did. Then I read a new release called Scullion, A Dishwasher's Guide to Mistaken Identity by Jared Green. This was fantastic. I just get very excited about graphic novels. Like I'm like, whoa, this is great. But then I look at the rating and I actually gave it four stars, not five stars. This was really great. I think it just has like such a amazing like feel to it. It's basically about this guy called uh, something this guy who is a dishwater a scullion and he does the dishes and everything for this princess princess raya or something like that and she's very famous for being like badass and she's gonna marry this prince um and everyone's like super excited about it and basically the scullion has read there's his books like guidebooks on how to be her and he really wants to be her and then one day they basically get uh, mistaken and someone who tries to kidnap her accidentally kidnaps him and all hell ensues so that's what the story is about the art is a, a really good and the story is quite funny there is all these trolls in there there is uh, some magic there are some political discussions i really like this the characters are all amazing i love the art style I, it was very fast paced without being too fast paced and I really like like those books that pack in a lot into little without being confusing because I feel like that's a very hard balance and this book just did it really well and I'm excited to hear more people talk about this. Yes. Then I read Adventure Time Volume 5. I am so obsessed with these Adventure Time comics. Like they just get better and better by every volume and there is like 20 plus volumes or something so obviously I'm thrilled about this. I only give it four stars? <laughs> Why am I so thrilled about these if I only gave them four stars? Oh yeah, what's cool about this one is that it starts off as basically you being a part of the story so basically all the bubbles, I say basically a lot, all the bubbles are drawn as if you're a person also doing adventures with JK Finn and I thought that was fun. They always do something new with these. There's always something fun involved. Oh yeah, I think I gave this one four stars because the actual biggest story that was part of this I wasn't a big fan of. Also this edition is just so bad. Like I'll put, insert a cover of the cover edition that I think is really cool and I don't know. Reflective cover. Then we have another Steven Universe comic. This is Harmony. I didn't like this so much. It was, it, it bored me, which is incredulous. Like it actually bored me. And I don't even remember most of the story. I was reading this while I was watching the show. And so I think it was like confused about what was happening in the show and what was happening in the, this uh, graphic novel. It's a standalone. Part of this that really frustrated me. Uh. Cheers was the fact that there was a lot of singing in this. It's called Harmony and I love the Steven Universe soundtrack. I think it's amazing. I listen to it all the time. I think my my friends like literally they're so pissed at me because I keep playing it and they're just like shut up. And for Halloween I thought I said we should all like dress up as the crystal gems and everyone's like no. Definitely not. Anyways, I didn't like this one. I've only read two of the Steven Universe graphic novels and I think it's because I have such a high standards from reading the Adventure Time comics that when I read the Steven Universe, I expect them to be as good. But obviously they're different creator, like not different creators, it's the same creator, sort of. Di Rebecca Sugar worked on both of them, but Pendleton Ward is the one that created Adventure Time. They do not have the same creator, but what I was trying to say is that these graphic novels and comics do not have the same writer and illustrator as the show. There we go. Actually, Then I read uh, this, Be Prepared by Vera Broskel. 
maybe that sounds familiar to some of you there she wrote another book called Anya's Ghost which is very famous I believe this was published after that and I don't know why there are not so many people talking about this because this was great it's thicker than Anya's Ghost and I really like Vera's like writing not writing uh, Vera's illustration style I think it's amazing this is based on her real life and it's basically this one summer where she goes to camp she's very excited because all her friends go to camp and she basically has never had the money or the ability to go to camp and so she hears about this Russian Russian camp and so it's her first time she's super excited to going of going to this camp but things unfortunately doesn't turn out the way she planned I recommend this I thought it was fun it was cute I gave it four stars there's nothing like apparently special about this it was just a comfortable fun read and it was also relatable all the struggles that Vera go through I think Vera is like a very strong person compared to like how I would have dealt with summer camp <laughs> So I liked it a lot and those were all the graphic novels I read this month. Let's move into the actual books since I've been talking for a very long time. At least now I feel like warmed up, you know? I wish I would have done separate reviews for these because they were both very great and I do want to go in depth of them. The first book that I read, the book I read in August, <laughs> was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Tashikusu Kawagakuchi. This is basically about this cafe and the whole story takes place in the cafe. In this cafe, there's basically this one chair that can take you back in time. But when you go back in time, you basically have to sit in this chair the entire time and you get this cup of coffee that is warm and you have to drink the cup of coffee before it gets cold or you'll be stuck in the past forever. I know, why would you gonna go back to the past if you can only sit in the same chair, you can only be there for a while, why? But basically, there follows, uh, it's almost written like a short story collection. No, it's written like these four short stories that, ba that follow different characters who come into the cafe and that won't go to go back, back in time. Blah. They're still the same people that are working in the cafe, so there is a lot of continuity throughout the story, but it's written like the stories don't really... Um, have a thread throughout them but they do all relate to each other so you obviously have to read the story like a novel it is a novel I don't know why I'm making it so confusing I really enjoyed this I think I gave it three stars but it's definitely more like a 3.75 it is very comforting like it made me feel like at home and warm and it definitely has some fun moments of things that happen when they go back to the past people who accidentally visit from the future I thought it was very fun. The characters are a little bit mysterious. You know how like just generally Japanese writers have these characters that you just can't really grasp. They're kind of anonymous in a way. But yes, I did really enjoy this. And then I read one of my new all-time favorite books, which is just like incredible and it's so crazy. Like, okay, I'll, I'll tell you how many people has read this on Goodreads because it's just fucking insane. Okay, it has 56 ratings on Goodreads, which is just like insane. I don't know why more people haven't read this. And that's Talking Animals by Johnny Murph Murphy. I'm so excited to talk about this. This is basically about this alpaca called Alfonso. He is a bureaucrat, but he doesn't really like his job. He has a job in the basement. He sorts through just paper after paper. He's trying to finish his dissertation but it's more than a thousand pages and he just doesn't know how doesn't know how to wrap it up his only best friend is this llama called Mitchell he's also very cracked he works on the floor above him and they're both super into music they're actually music lovers they're not a huge fan of their job and those are the characters you follow Alfonso is such like um he's almost like a hippie that's in the wrong place and he loves to think and he loves to reflect on like his old his whole dissertation is about the impact of llama's history on society and how it's basically affected our culture and the way we live today and it's just so much information that's one part of the story then the actual like world of the story is that if it takes place in new york and all the characters are animals doing human stuff so there's no humans ever you know humans are just never existed and it's as if animals actually why don't i explain it like this you know the movie Sut sutropolis i believe it's a children's movie i love this movie 
this is the adult version of that if you can imagine it it is so funny it has a bunch of puns like this has a bunch of like alpaca llama puns it has animal puns like they're just it's so funny and on top of that it has exactly what i want from a book when i went to the bookstore i asked for a fiction book on environmentalism and the guy couldn't tell me any he had no idea if there was any fiction books on environmentalism and for you anyone who wants that i recommend this book you know all those things all the racial problems all the division we have between people today it is large but we're still the same species you know imagine if we still had all these problems but we were animals there's way way more differences between my animals and also a lot of things that could go wrong when it comes to species injustice i would say you would i guess you would say and especially between for example sea animals and land animals and that's kind of like what this book is about is like the 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 sea animals rising to reclaim themselves as intelligent creatures because they've never been believed to be and the animals on land are poisoning the oceans and you see how this is all about us i mean it, it was so good i really loved it the only critique i have for someone who might not like it is that the book doesn't really have any real plot and I think it was, especially in the description, it's sort of written as if it was meant to have a lot of crime solving or that Mitchell and Alfonso was gonna help a lot with the uh, ocean uprisings. But it's very non-plot driven. It has a lot of like written text and speculations. It has some like it's just so good. I loved it. I love it. It's just my type of book. I really loved it. It's a bit slow, but because I read it over a month, I find it constantly interesting. I loved Alfonso as a character. There's just so much like rep like metaphors that I just adore a lot. I really love this. I want more people, more than 56 people to read it, which is just crazy. It's also a new release. Maybe that's why. I recommend so that is it for this video. I know it was long, but I just got really excited about the books I read, especially Talking Animals. So comment down below if you've read any of these books and your thoughts on them, what books you guys have read in the last couple months. And if you're excited, if you want to read any of these books after I talked about them, that would be good to know. And I hope you guys have a great month, spooky October, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!